It used to be one of the largest industries in San Diego. Now it's a faint memory and a namesake. Tuna Harbor in San Diego comes by its name, honestly, paying homage to an industry that once dominated Southern California waters. Joining me to talk about a new exhibit at the San Diego History Center celebrating what tuna once meant to San Diego are Matt Schiff, curator of the exhibit, and Julius Zolezzi, a retired tuna fisherman. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thanks for having us. So, Matt, I bet a lot of people don't remember that San Diego was once home to a big tuna industry. Tell us about that. Yeah, a lot of people don't remember, and I think it's due to the large influx in population after the tuna industry left. But for a time, the tuna industry was one of the biggest ones in San Diego, probably second only to the Navy, employing hundreds of thousands of people all along San Diego Bay. So what happened? What happened to this industry? The industry went into decline in the late 70s due to um, some environmental factors, um, and then you know, largely the tuna are migratory, so they move as well. Wow. Now, Julius, I know your, your family is, is part of this history, played an important role. Tell us about how they got started and you got started in the tuna industry. Well, growing up in Little Italy, everybody was a fisherman. And that was my dad's trade, and I followed his footsteps. And I, I went fishing when I was nine years old. And, and I really enjoyed it. I loved fishing. You know, it was really a challenge to catch the fish. It was a lot of fun, but later on, let me tell you, it's a lot of hard work, but the return was good. So describe tuna fishing. Is this, are these large boats who go out with nets? Is this catching a fish with a pole? Would you describe how you well, did it. When I, when I was in the younger days, I was pole fishing with my father. Then later on, we branched out and we built purseiners, 650 ton boats, 1200 ton boats. And, and these boats cost anywhere from three million to five, six million dollars. But they caught a lot of fish. You know, we'd, we'd go out maybe 30 days, 40 days, and, and come home with a load of fish. And you had to find, and we were fishing on dolphin, you know. And the, the dolphin, I mean, the, the tuna would just, just lay right underneath the dolphin. Now, it's a mystery why they follow the dolphin. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have our views, the scientists have their views, okay? What's your view? Why do you think they do that? Well, they feed on the same species. Mm -hmm. They feed on squid, small fish, anchovies, you know? And I think that's, the, and at night, we found out later, at night, they spread out and they go deep. And that's when they find the squid. And wasn't it really their relationship with the dolphins that kind of led to this industry's demise somewhat as well? Wasn't that part of it? Yes, I'm afraid so, you know, and uh, so we would find the dolphin to catch the tuna, okay, and then we had a problem because of mortality, okay, but it wasn't as bad as, as they put on TV, and it became a real public issue, and it got so bad that, I mean, we actually... We were doing the right things. You know, we implemented some new uh, one-inch mesh, which Harold Medina, we call it the Harold Medina panel. And it saved a lot of dolphin. Mm -hmm. It just would just spill right over the net, you know. And we did that for a while, but it wasn't enough. We got to a point where it's 99.8% 90, released, unharmed, okay? Mm -hmm. But that wasn't good enough. So finally, we had to move elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And we were very fortunate when we went to the west, like Samoa, mm -hmm. American Samoa, we found more fish over there. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't dolphin associated at all. Right. Matt, why is it important to remind people about this industry? Well, it's important in a lot of ways because there's so many fishermen still here. I mean, Julius is just one of thousands who are still here and they still live uh, pretty much in the enclaves that they started in the Portuguese largely in Point Loma Italians largely in Little Italy and the Hispanics you know in Barrio Logan and so these are very tight-knit communities and um, there's a lot of pride there and I mean it was it was an industry that not only employed say you know the men on the tuna boats but a lot of the women worked in the canneries and then, then in the early days you know the kids would be the ones responsible for mending the uh, bait nets that the bait boats needed to catch tuna so you know, it's our mission at the History Center to tell the story of people who made San Diego great, and these people are some of them.
And I know there are a lot of great photos. Where can people find out more information about the time and place of this exhibit? SanDiegoHistory.org has all you need. We've got a button uh, about tuna right on the, on the front. We have uh, journal articles about tuna, and of course our research library is just full of all these photos and a lot of some other old documents. So. We will also link to that on okay. our website, kpbs.org. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Thanks okay. for having us.